Again, welcome everyone to uh, Get em Radio, God in the Midst Radio Broadcast. This is your Friday Night Lights edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy, along with my co-host, Pastor Paul McCoy. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. The Heavenly Father, we thank you because we know that you're an awesome, wonderful, and magnificent God. You're God and you're God all by yourself. We lift you up, Lord, because you're, we say in songs, if, if you, your word says, if you be lifted up, the Heavenly Father, you will draw all men unto to you, O oh God. And we just thank you, Lord, that we are here to lift you up tonight, the Heavenly Father. And we, we thank you because we know it's nothing but your blood, the blood of, of Jesus that saved us. So, Lord, we thank you, we thank you, and we thank you, Lord, for everything that, that you have done, that you're doing, and that you're going to do, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus, the Heavenly Father, over this broadcast this night, the Heavenly Father. We plead the blood over the technology of the Internet, the phone, and, and, and all of that stuff, Lord. We just thank you. And then, Lord, we thank you and plead your blood right now over everybody that is listening now and those who will be listening in the future, Lord, that, 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 that you bless them, the Heavenly Father. Whatever they're going through, the Heavenly Father, we plead the blood over them right now in the name of Jesus, knowing that your blood has power, wonder-working power. We ask you now, the Heavenly Father, as we get ready to go into your word, dear Lord, uh, step in and, and just, just have your way, dear Lord. Touch the Heavenly Father, anoint afresh as only you can. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength, my rock, and my redeemer. Bless now that we just not be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Have your way this night, dear Lord. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Again, welcome everyone, welcome. Uh, tonight we're going to look at a very familiar passage of scripture in the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, and um, our key verse from Daniel chapter 6 is uh, verse 22, Daniel chapter 6, verse 22, and it, it reads as thus, it says, my God sent his angels and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Amen. Amen. And so we, we are familiar with this story, Daniel in the lion's den. We, we've heard it talked uh, uh, as children. We've seen movies of it. We've heard preachers preaching it over and over. We have read it for ourselves in, in, the, in the Bible. This is the story of Daniel in the lion's den. And, and this story of Daniel in the lion's den has so many great nuggets in it. If you just read the whole entire chapter and tonight, uh, for, for brevity, I'm not going to read the entire chapter, but I'm going to talk about the entire chapter. Amen. As God leads. And so it is a wonderful, wonderful story that that shows God working in a miraculous manner in the life of of a believer. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but but I need God to work a miracle in my life. In every situation and every circumstance in which I live, I need a miracle. And this this story, this story is a, a proven miracle. Amen. Amen. I mean, there's no if, ands, and buts about it. There's no doubt about it. This is a is a story of an awesome miracle that God allowed happen to happen, that God made sure that it happened. This is the same kind of miracle in Daniel chapter 6 that we saw in Daniel chapter 3 with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed, uh, and Abednego up in the, the fiery furnace. This is one of those miracles. 
that we can all grab a hold to when, we, when we're wondering in our lives. Well, well, God, I need this, or I'm in this situation, or I'm in this bind. I need a miracle, God. I want a miracle in my life, oh God. And, 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 and this, this, this is where you go in the Bible and you see that God can work a miracle. God will work a miracle. And if you just hold on just a little while longer, hallelujah, God will work a miracle in your life. Somebody, if I was in a, in a place where you could talk back to me, I'd say, somebody say hallelujah. Cause God is a miracle worker. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, so in this, in this sixth chapter of Daniel, in this sixth chapter of Daniel, the first thing that we see, if we were to read it, we would see the fact that there was a plot against Daniel. There was a plot against Daniel. There were some people who were jealous of the favor that God had given Daniel. They were jealous of the position that God had put Daniel in. They, 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 they had all kind of stuff going on against Daniel because Daniel was in an awesome position. Oh, you got to hear me, somebody. This, this, this need, you need to understand that when you have a spirit of excellence, and you have a spirit of integrity, and you have a spirit of faithfulness. People will see your faithfulness. They will see your integrity. They will see your spirit of excellence, and they will hate on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, see. We miss that. We miss that. We, 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 we run around wondering, Lord, why, why is this happening to me? It's because you're doing a great job. You're one of God's faithful servants. And, and that's what Daniel was. He was one of God's faithful servants. And so the king, King Darius, put together a, a, an organization because he didn't want to have to rule the whole kingdom by itself. And he established some 20 governors, 120 governors. And satraps, as they called them, in his kingdom to govern over the people. And Daniel, who was in exile, who was 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 a captive uh, 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 under uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, has now moved into a position of power. And, and you got to understand, even in a bad situation, just like Daniel was in, God can still show you favor. I'm helping somebody tonight because somebody is, is, is in a job where they may believe that they're in a bad situation. Somebody may be a teacher at a school or in a school where they think it's a bad situation. Somebody may be in the midst of their family life or their church life and they believe they're in a bad situation. But hold on. Your change is coming because God can work a miracle no matter what the situation. Just like he did for Joseph when his brothers betrayed him. He said, Daniel's mean, now Joseph said at the end, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good that some might be saved. Oh, you got to hear it now. You got to hear it. God, God will make a way out of no way. Well, well, you know, just like he put Esther in a position. That, that Esther, when it came time to, to save the, the, the children of Israel, Esther was in a position to do that. Just hold on. You may not understand why God got you there. You may not understand why people are plotting against you. But God got a reason. And he's going to make a miracle that he might be glorified. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And so they, they had this plot going. And so the, these, these men, they saw that the king really favored Daniel and he was going to put them in a, put him in a high position, maybe in a position over all of them. And so these governors got jealous and got upset and, 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 and they plotted and they tried to find something wrong with Daniel. They tried to find where Daniel was slipping. They tried to find if Daniel was out dipping. But Daniel wasn't slipping and he wasn't dipping. Daniel was a man of integrity, a man of excellence, and a man of faithfulness. And so 
They conspired with themselves, say, well, if we can't get Daniel on anything, because everything we see about him is good, well, why don't we use his good for his bad? Why don't we look at what, what does he do? He loves his God. And Daniel, he prays three times a day to his God. So, so what we going to do, we're going to go to the king, and we're going to set up this plot and this scheme and have the king create a decree that says nobody ought to be praying to any god or any other man but the king. Now, you need to understand something. It's always people in power that when they have the power, they want somebody to stroke their ego. And we have to be careful. I'm talking to somebody right now. You in a position of power, don't be letting people stroke your ego. Be humble before the Lord. Be humble before the Lord because if you walking around letting your stuff people and and you know, you know what we call it. Those kissing up on your yeah, yeah, your backside. They they stroking your ego. They stroking your ego, and then you get your ego stroke, that'll get you in trouble. Here, King Darius, let these schemers, these plotters, stroke his ego. Oh, mercy, God. And so they, they convinced him to write this decree. And, and, and King Darius wrote the decree. Verse 8 of Daniel says, Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing, so that it cannot be changed according to the laws of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Oh, have mercy. Just because he let these men stroke his ego. These men, these governors plotting against him. That's why I'm one of those people when I see the things going on in our political arena here in America and even around the world, we know that people are always plotting and scheming to get something done. And, and, and then if you got leaders that have this egotistical, narcissistic mindset, Oh, I'm talking about somebody. I ain't going to call his name. But, but when people have this egotistical and narcissistic mindset, they can easily be swayed by somebody's plots and somebody's schemes. They, they, their ego is too big. They don't even want to understand what's going on. So that was the plot. They did set this plot up that, that if somebody does not pray to this king, they, they're going to throw them into the lion's den. For 30 days, says in verse 7, and this statue went out and the king signed it. Now, after the plot was put in place, these people plotted against Daniel. Daniel was eventually put in the lion's den. Why? Because this decree had been made and Daniel was a man of faith. Daniel believed in praying to God and giving him thanks three times a day. And so, even though Daniel knew about the decree, even though Daniel understood what the decree meant, he went home at noon, opened up his doors, opened up his windows, got down on his knees and called on Jehovah Jireh the God that will provide. He called on it, called on it, that everybody and anybody could see. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. Too many of us are in environments where when we walk into our jobs, when we walk into the schools, when we walk into the grocery store, we want to take off our religion and, 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 and kind of hide from everybody. Oh, no. We got to put on the whole arm of God because we got to be the ones that stand. And having done all the stand, we got to stand. 
standing for the Lord that, 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 that saved us, stand for the Lord that brought us through. And he will make a miracle. Oh, hallelujah. And so they caught Daniel praying. And these same plotters, when they caught this man of faith praying, they went to the king and said, oh, king, didn't you say <laughs> that, 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 that if anybody did pray to, to any other God except you, that you would cast them in the lion's den? And the king, you know, he stroked it and said, yeah, yeah, man, that's true. I said that. I said, it's the law of the Persians. It's, it's, it, and it can't be altered. It's my decree. Oh, if I had some time tonight, I would talk about us declaring and decreeing a thing and knowing that, that we have the power to declare and decree a thing and no one can change it. God told us that. Jesus said it himself. He says, he says that, 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 that if we Bind things here on earth, it'll be bound in heaven. If we loose things here on earth, it'll be loose in heaven. That's done by the decrees of our mouths. And it can't be changed. But that, 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 that's a whole nother message. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Daniel. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. Because the king made a decree. And he couldn't change the decree. The plotters had set up the king and set up Daniel. And so when the king heard that it was Daniel that was praying. He was greatly displeased with himself. And, his heart, and set his heart on Daniel to be delivered. Oh, you got to hear it. He couldn't figure out how he could do it. But, but I believe that at that point, the king said, dog, man, these guys and set me up having me walking around thinking I'm all dead in a bag of chips. But I can't, I can't undo my degrees. It's established and it, and, and, and it can't change. I'm the king. I can't do that. That's opening up Pandora's box. And letting out all kind of stuff. They say, well, you don't have to do what the king say do because the king can change his mind. So, here it is. King Darius gave the decree to put Daniel in the lion's den. Now that Daniel was in the lion's den, listen to verses 16. So the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and set him into the lion's den. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, listen to this, y'all. Your God, whom you serve continually, will deliver you. The king didn't know God for himself, but he knew Daniel's God. The king didn't understand. Daniel's God for himself, but he understood how faithful Daniel was to his God. And verse 17 says, then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet ring of his Lord that the purpose concerning Daniel might not change. Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. Sometimes you got to go through some hard times. No matter what. No, no, no cause or fault of your own. It's just because of who you are in God. God's getting ready to work a miracle in your life. God's getting ready to do some extraordinary things in your life. So that the people around you can see. That the God you've been praying to, the God that you serve, the God that you always talking about is a on-time God, is a deliverer, 
a miracle worker. Oh, yes. Yes, folks, like, well, look at her. She always talking about praying about God and how God is so faithful. Why ain't she got that? And why ain't she got that? Like, like they go, like you go all of a sudden lose your faith in God. Oh, no. You can't lose your faith in God. God's been too good for you. I don't know about you, but he's been good to me. I don't care what my situation and circumstances might be, but God's been good to me. He's been good in the past. He's good right now. And there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to be good in the future. God is good. All the time and all the time. God is good. Here it is. Now the king went to his palace. Spent the night fasting. No music was brought before him. Also, his sleep went from him. The king may didn't know who God was, but he did everything that he was supposed to do. He fasted, and I believe that he also prayed. Oh, you got to hear me now. We sing a song in the jail. It says, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, and they took a little time, and they prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. I know my mama is praying for me. I know my sisters is praying for me. I know my brothers are praying for me. I know my wife and my children are praying for me. And guess what? I'm doing the same for them. Somebody prayed for me. And so that morning, because King Darius believed in the power of God, working in Daniel's life. The king got up that morning. It says in verse 19, and arose early in the morning. Somebody say early in the morning. And went, and he came to the den. And I want you to see and hear what this king did. He cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. And it says, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Oh, hallelujah. He was crying. He was lamenting. But he said something. He said, has your God, the living God, the servant of the, has he delivered you? And Daniel responded and said, O king, live forever. My God sent his angels and shut the lion's mouth. Shut your mouth, y'all. Shut your mouth. That's what the, he did. He shut the lion's mouth. So that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. Also, king, I have done no wrong before you. Glory to God. God made a miracle, shut the lion's mouth. God will work a miracle on your behalf and shut the lion's mouth. Those who are plotting against you, those that are using tools against you, God will shut them down. Oh, hallelujah. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Oh, you got to hear that word from Isaiah. 
It didn't say it wouldn't be formed. It wouldn't say people wouldn't be plotting against you. It wouldn't, didn't say that, that things won't come at you. It does not say the devil will not try everything under the sun to come up against you. No, 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 no. He's going around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But I'm here to tell you, God will shut his mouth. Oh, hallelujah. God worked a miracle. And then, after God worked a miracle, that king who saw Daniel's faith, that king who saw Daniel's excellence, that king who saw Daniel's integrity, was so glad that Daniel was still alive. And when they took Daniel out of the lion's den with no injury found on him because he believed in God, the king gave the command and they brought those men who had, who had caused Daniel all of this problem and he cast them and their families into the lion's den. Oh, you got to hear me. You dig a hole for somebody. You better dig a hole for yourself. Because God don't play like that. We used to say this. And it's so funny how we used to say God don't like ugly. <laughs> That's how we used to say it. And, and some of God don't like folks to be doing other folks wrong. You're going to reap what you sow. And God is faithful. So these men, their children and their wives were thrown in with the lions. If they had had innocent blood, if they had done no wrong, the lions wouldn't have bothered them. But the lions did. And the lions ate them up. So that's to say that them lions, when Daniel was in there, had the teeth to destroy him. They had a bite. But instead of biting Daniel, they waited for their big meal. Oh, mercy. And King Darius, from that day on, made a decree that everybody should serve the living God, Daniel's God. I'm here to tell you, this whole story is was all about a setup. They set Daniel up, but that setup, that setback that Daniel experienced in the lion's den was God's way of glorifying himself for an awesome comeback. Darius. King Darius. Would be the king. That made the decree. We called him Cyrus. He made the decree. That the children of Israel. Would later go back home. And rebuild the temple. To the point where I think. That when he made that, de that decree. Daniel was standing right by his side, helping him write it so that the children of Israel could one day go home, according to prophecy, and rebuild the wall and rebuild the temple. Praise be to God. God can use us. Ordinary people, even in our bad circumstances, to work a miracle. Our job is to keep the faith and believe. And so tonight, I want to encourage you to have faith in God. Faith, that acronym, we talk about it. Forsaking all, I trust him. Let go of your fears because God's going to work a miracle in your life if you just lean and trust in him. Fear is false evidence appearing real. Don't worry about it. Even if it is real, God will make a way 
out of no way. Bless you tonight. I hope this word has helped somebody. I hope the story of Daniel has came through to you so clearly in your situation and circumstances that you know that God, someone has said, is always in control. And he'll make a way out of no way. Glory to God. For those who are on the line, I'd like to ask you a simple question. You heard me speak and talk and you probably say, oh man, that's a man of God. He got faith. The question is, do you have faith in the same God that I believe and trust in? And if you don't, I'm offering to you, him to you today. It's real simple. All you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and that God raised him from the dead and confess that with your mouth. That's called prayer, praying to God. And so let us pray the prayer of salvation. Please pray this with me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. And God, has worked a miracle already in your life by saving your soul. That's miracle one. And he's got so many other miracles in store for you. Even if you get caught in a den of lions, he'll work a miracle in your life. We thank you and we praise you, God, for this word. And we ask you to continue to bless your people. Facebook, I want to say good night to you. If you want to come on and discuss this lesson, have prayer with us, or, or, or get a word, you can call Get em Radio, 619-639-4733, 619-639-4733. Bye for now, Facebook. Be blessed and always be a blessing.